morning, good morning, my viewers and subscribers. Welcome once again to these critique. It's a pleasure on every occasion to interact with you when you pass through the channel. It's a beautiful day in the month of April. I am going back in time in the month of May, today being the 3rd of May. I am happy to be alive and I want to assume that all who views this are happy to be alive. We give God all the thanks and the praise and the glory and the honor that is due unto his holy name. It is in him that we live and move and have our being. Now, as you know, on my channel, at this Critique, I share unsolicited commentary on whatever the social topic may be, whatever touches our humanity in any way could be aired here on my channel. This time around, I am thinking about the concept immortality and I want you to join me in my thought mode this morning. So welcome to the channel and let me get right into the material. Now I want to ask how have you thought about it up to now? Is immortality apportioned in degrees? Let me repeat that. Is immortality apportioned in degrees? I am thinking about it. The fallen angel we know now as Satan, whose name was Lucifer while he resided in heaven. Though classified as a, an immortal being, doesn't he have a day of destruction coming? The answer to that question is yes. Satan has a day of destruction coming. A day when his life will come to an end. And it is on that basis that I venture to talk about the concept of immortality. Because we are told throughout scripture that Satan, originally Lucifer, is an immortal being. So the question is, how is it possible that a day is coming when his life will end if he is an immortal being? It seemed to me then that the term, the concept immortality is to be viewed in degrees and I will clarify what I mean by that as I proceed with this video. As humans, we understand the word immortal to mean never ending. Am I right? Yes, continuing forever. But when God allows me to think a little harder, I realize that only God is truly immortal. Why? And the answer is, because everything else apart from God are created things. Everything else apart from God were created by him. Even the angels and other beings which are in heaven. So when we think about it really and truly, God is the only true immortal being that there is. Sorry for that noise passing in the background there. Bahamians are happy people. Yes, only God is immortal in the truest sense of the word because everything else is created by him. Alright? And so let us get this thing in the proper context. What I understand immortality to mean is that as long as a being like us who are all created beings remain sinless God can make our lives immortal 
He can make us live forever. But that decision lies with God. Can you see it? So listen to how I had it written down first. After having said that only God is truly immortal because everything else apart from him are created beings, even those angels and other beings in heaven. What I understand this to mean is that as long as a being is a created being, immortality will only be apportioned to a degree in our lives, the way we think of immortality, meaning that the last word resides with God. A being like us and Satan and every other being except God, a being enjoys life beyond what is apportioned to the mortal state, right? As long as it remains true to its creator. Let me repeat that. A being, whoever that being is, enjoys life beyond what is apportioned to us as mortals. But that is just as long as that being remains true to its creator. <clears throat> and that extended life can be continually extended where there is no interference such as the entrance of sin. And we know how our story, our four parents, our first parents, they were made as immortal beings to continually and endlessly live in the presence of God. But what happened? Sin entered the equation through the visit to the Garden of Eden by that angel who was kicked out of heaven previously. All right? The power for immortality remains in God and with God so that things are kept in the righteous so that things are kept in the righteous sorry I just lost my page the power remains in God and with God so that things are kept in the righteous order laid down by God I believe we can see that and understand and agree with that note that God requires worship from all created beings If you are subject to worshiping God, it is evidence that you are a created being. Lucifer knew this and Satan knows it now. The way God has his system structured, no being is let into the storehouse of immortality and given a set of keys to do as it pleases there. So immortality is not up to us. Immortality is given to us, granted to us by him who owns it, which is God. God remains in control over and above all so that when a moment is taken to look at our reality here, Satan, though viewed as immortal, is only viewed as immortal because he has been granted much longer days than us mortal beings have been allowed. Some of you may not have ever thought of it like that before. Welcome to this critique. Satan is still under the purview of God, the creator of heaven and earth. Let it be known around the world. There are some of us who gives too much respect and honor to Satan. 
and Satan smiles about it and maybe says to himself, you better or else. And he's free to do that because he has been given a little time to hang out here in this domain. But he knows that he is still under the purview of God and that he is not truly immortal. And as it is with Satan, similarly, if humans are saved from this earth, we will be subject to God, which means that only in righteousness is immortality maintained. So for God, being immortal can be switched off for any being that he has created as long as the being interferes with or interrupts righteousness. The Holy Scriptures state that sin, whatever the expression used to describe sin, sin will not rise up a second time. That is after the end of this drama where we are looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ and the removal of those who have lived righteously from this sin-cursed earth and it being devoured by flames. Sin will not rise up a second time. I take comfort in that fact and we should all take comfort in that reassuring statement. By allowing time to lapse, God has proven to all righteous beings who are watching that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, his gift, is eternal life. Something we should be mindful of and remain mindful of. By allowing sin to play out over all these centuries, God has demonstrated that only love enables eternal life. Where there is sin, there cannot be eternal life. Which proves to us that if Satan is the what you'd say, the person in whom all sinful practices reside cannot be an immortal being as long as God sits on the throne. Okay? Another thing, by sending Christ to redeem fallen humanity, God has demonstrated in the perfect sinless life of Christ that it is possible to live above sin. You can say praise the Lord for that. It is possible to live above sin. Although we, we will all hold our heads and say what a struggle it is and can be. But Christ has shown us that it is possible to live above sin. The challenge we face today is that we are still living in the sin-stained environment and the being who stained it is still residing here with us. That being is Satan. He still hates God. He still hates everything that God, God creates and he has still stuck to his purpose of trying to destroy anything created by God. To what avail, I don't really know because I'm sure he knows by now that his end is coming. But he remains, and he will remain until God says his time is up. Upon his removal, I hasten to say, and the complete purging of the environment by God, we will 
be able to enjoy living without the albatross of sin hanging around our necks. We will be living and loving God. Living only to love and worship God. And with sin not being allowed to rise up a second time, we will live eternally with God as our King. I trust and hope that you are blessed, have been blessed by my presentation this time around. May you be blessed and strengthened and also encouraged by this presentation. This is Dee's Critique and I am Emmanuel Shield. I promise you that I will see you soon in another video, in another bit of unsolicited commentary right here at Dee's Critique. Until then, let peace abide.